Hi, I'm Blake Lively and this is my flowers. Don't you like flowers? I love flowers. Girl power, flowers. No way. I'm sure that by now you have all seen the drama around the adaptation of Colin Hoover's book It Hand With Hers starring Blake Lively and Justin Baldoni directed by Justin Baldoni and produced by Blake Lively and the drama is that there's a creative uh, conflict between Justin as and the version that he wants for the book which centers more around DV and is more of a uh, serious film which centers DV and the implication of DV uh, in the in the show and, and Blake's artistic uh, view of the book which is more about girl power showing that Lily Bloom is this girl boss and kind of minimizing the DV because according to her DV victims should not be defined by DV basically they they are more than that we should not let DV take a big place in the life of DV victims even though a lot of them are traumatized for life because of what happened to them but according to Blake Lively we shouldn't even emphasize on that she wanted to create a rom-com a girl power she wanted to talk about the dressing the flowers and create kind of this barbie Oppenheimer kind of situation with a husband uh film deadpool now people have been saying that there have been a lot of drama about it they're, they have been calling blake lively um a mean girl and all of the cast of the show do not follow justin baldoni and justin seems to be the only person actually talking about the serious part of this film which is the dv and really just um every interview that he has done has just been amazing way he has he has just have the right words and in this kind of situation i feel like dv is a subject where finding the right words is not all that easy because you can easily say something wrong because you're trying to find the words but if you're not well informed and well educated on the matter you can end up saying rubbish look at Blake Lively but I feel like Justin have just been killing all this interview it shows uh, so much maturity so much um, empathy and seriousness and respect for DV victims and also just for the book itself even though the book doesn't respect itself and that's a different topic for a different time Justin Baldoni have just been amazing in this press tour but we can all see that there is a star contrast with how Blake Lively is promoting the movie. She's promoting a different movie. She's promoting a rom-com with flowers and girly stuff, which doesn't make any sense. On top of that, none of them follow Justin Baldoni. So people have been talking about a feud and possible drama and creative differences between Blake Lively and Justin Baldoni. Now, we're not going to really go in depth into whether Blake Lively is a mean girl or not. I think by now we have all seen that interview and I've already talked about it in my previous video on the subject. So if you guys want to hear my thoughts on Blake Lively as a person, you can go check it out over there. But the main focus on this video is that Blake lively is the reason why Hollywood is dying. I know it sounds extreme but hear me out. People like Blake Lively are the reason why Hollywood is on a decline and the reason why I say that is based on this one interview with Justin Baldoni. Take a look at it. Well I think the key was to to not play him or to think of him as a villain because um, these these men these people who cause harm don't think of themselves that way. Um, it's, it's quite the opposite. So it was very intentional to also make sure that we were protecting Lily throughout the process by making sure Ryle was likable. And the only way to do that is to make Ryle a human and to protect Lily in that way. Because I didn't want anybody, like we have enough people in the world judging women for staying in these relationships. The main issue is that there are too many people like Blake Lively in Hollywood and very few people like Justin Baldoni. When you listen to this interview, basically Justin is explaining why he uh, made sure that Riley is a likable character why he's charming, why he decided to play him in such a charming way and he said and it's really really interesting he said I wanted him to be charming I wanted people to like him to find him likable so that they understand why Lily Bloom stayed why she fell for him also I wanted to play him as a very charming person because people 
that do this kind of things people that abuse their partners believe that they are good people they generally believe that they are good people that made mistakes and this little clip is extremely crucial to understand why Hollywood is on a decline. Justin went into this project, he read the book, he understood the book, went into this project with a certain level of intentionality, a certain level of respect for the book. Even though the book doesn't respect itself, we can all agree on that. The book is highly problematic. But Justin went into this role as a director with intention, with a full comprehension of the seriousness of the book. I had nerves because I cared so deeply about the women and the people that go through this every day. And I wanted to make sure I did their story justice. I wanted it to be truthful. And you know, that's what drives all of this. And so, so at the end of the day, it was because I cared. For example, when you go on YouTube, you will find countless of video essay of people taking films or book and making hour long video essay explanation on why this book is good, why this book is bad, about a certain theme of the book. I myself, I do video essays and if you go on my channel, you'll find countless of video where I talk about a certain topic in a, in a film, a certain topic in a show. People People are able to go into a work of art and try to understand the work that they have in front of them and try to understand what is the message, what is the theme, what is the purpose of this character, what are we supposed to get from this character, why is this story the way it is. People are able to do that in such a brilliant way. But the funny thing is that the people that are producing the films are not doing the video essays. They are walking into this project with no understanding of the project, of the integrity of the book itself. They go into this project with a sense of entitlement, of ego. They take a book that already has a pre-established fan base and they decided that they're just going to do their own thing with it. They're just going to use it as a stepping stone for their ego. They will take an already pre-established license of a video game or of a book and they will decide that they just want to put their own spin on it. They want to create something else. And that's what creates the clash between the fans and directors because most directors are not actually interested in protecting or respecting the integrity of a work the integrity of the source material but rather they are more ego focused on doing their own thing but the funny thing is that if you just want to do your own thing then do your own thing just create a story and how does this apply to it end with us justin baldoni is one of those directors that went into this project without any ego. He went to this book with the idea of, I am going to try to bring to the screen the essence of the book itself, to bring into the screen the characters and their nuances. He understand perfectly how serious this book should be taken. And he is not, as a director, very interested in showcasing his grandiose idea and how intelligent he is. And if you watch multiple interviews with him, on multiple occasions, he talks about the fact that there was some time that he had to step back as, as a man and let the other woman lead because he's very much aware of how him being a man, he can bring some of his biases into the story. You surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. Um, I had an incredible team uh, and, and an incredible group of women um, around me. So it was very, like when you're talking about somebody that respects the book, that doesn't have any ego, that understands the idea of there is a fan base, but other than being there is a fan base that is expecting you to respect the book, there is also a respect for the book itself that he has and doesn't have any ego whatsoever. Like Justin Baldoni wrote a freaking essay. When he said in that interview, people that abuse their partner do not think of themselves as abuser but rather they think that they are good people that just do one or two mistakes he understands the character of riley when he said i had to make him charming 
and likable to protect Lily Bloom and so for people to understand why she stayed this is a man that wrote that video essay that did the work that understands the source material before going into the project this is a man that went into the project without an agenda of putting himself on the forefront as a director but rather as somebody that just want this very important story to be out there and to actually help uh, DV survivors or help raise awareness. On the other hand, you have the rest of Hollywood or rather I would say the majority of Hollywood directors who in this case are represented by Blake Lively. There are people who go into projects that are based on source materials but they do not actually give a fuck about what the book or what the video game is actually about. They are just interested in how they can put their own spin on it. And don't get me wrong, it's very interesting and important for directors and producers to put their own spin on stories because if you just want to do the exact same thing that was in the book, then just go with the book. Of course, they can take creative liberties and they have to take creative liberties when you want to turn a 500 page book into a two hour movies you don't have a choice you're gonna have to make choices but in order to be able to take creative liberties you have to understand the book itself you have to understand the essence of the book because if you don't understand the essence of the book well you, you will just end up doing your own thing the issue is that most directors they don't even try they don't care and when you see Blake Lively she doesn't care she has a goal and her goal is to recreate the the Barbie Oppenheimer phenomenon that happened last year she wants to reproduce that with it end with hers and Deadpool and Wolverine that is a main goal. She doesn't care about the story itself. She doesn't care about who Lily Bloom is, who Riley is, who Atlas is. She doesn't care about the characters. I don't even think that it's from a malicious intent that she's doing this. I don't think that she's purposefully wanting to hurt people and knowing Blake Lively, she wants people to like her and she wants people to love her and it's just that in Hollywood they have been so notorious for doing this and getting away with it so much that she didn't even think I don't think she even think that it was going to blow up or be such an issue. Historically producers and directors have always used already established novels that already had a fan base in order to just propel their own egotistical idea on screen it has never been about the book itself and that's the issue with Hollywood that's the issue why they keep bringing out all these new films and this new series based on based on established books and video games and people just hate it and it's just bad and they just try again and it's bad and they try again and it's bad and people are tired and the funny thing is that if Blake Lively just wanted to do a home thing if she just wanted to create this rom-com she could do it she has the connection she has the money but because because the Hollywood is so used to just taking pre-established work and uses that as a stepping stone, this is what she did. She could have just, she literally could have just created a basic ass movie about a girl that has a flower shop and really just go all in on that rom-com girl boss stuff that she wanted to do. She could produce it by herself. She has the connections. She could direct it. She could produce it. She could have her husband support. She could even make sure that it comes out at the same time as Deadpool. In order to do that Barbie uh, Oppenheimer situation that they were trying to, that she's actually trying to do with It End With Us. She could do that. She didn't have to, have to use It End With Us as the stepping stone for that. And I'm sure that to a certain point, she's only doing what they promised her. I'm sure that somebody I uh, promised that that she could do it with it end with us and so the movie that she's promoting is the movie that they promised her that she could promote. I'm sure that when she came into this project somebody told her that she could do it. That she didn't need to do her own thing and that's the issue. If you want to do your own thing just fucking do your own thing you know. Why are you taking already play established work and trying to butcher it and turn it into something that it isn't and being disrespectful on the way. Versace dress, uh, 2002, the butterfly dress. And this dress meant so much to me. Oh my God, my husband's getting soaking wet in the rain. Um, it meant so much to me because of what she meant to me. Like she was just somebody who represented lo lo love and beauty and youth and hard work and determination and strength. And she was in touch with her sexuality and her delicacy. And, and she just sort of represented it. One of the things I really love about this is that I feel like people should be less focused on whether Blake Lively is actually a mean girl or not. Honestly, I don't think we care that much. And focus on protecting Justin Baldoni as a 
director simply because directors like him in Hollywood are rare they're extremely rare like a director that really cares about the work the, about the art itself that really care about the product that really care about understanding what is the source material they are extremely extremely rare the level of humility the level of awareness the level of maturity that Justin Baldoni has as a director is extremely rare and something that I feel like collectively we need to protect and basically not let the hatred that you might have for Blake Lively for whatever reason overshadow Justin Baldoni and how how this man has so much to offer and I think we need to really protect that and put more shed more light to the fact that he's a amazing director and a little bit less light on the fact that the Blake Lively sounds dumb and the second thing I wanted to say about protecting him not only because of the amazing work that this man promises in the future but because Hollywood is gonna come for him with the full force like they're gonna attack this man they're going to try to destroy him he has already been coming out that he was talking about Blake Lively's weight and he will make that feel uncomfortable doing sex scenes and stuff like that which I think is fundamentally false they're already trying to shut him down and we all know that Blake Lively and her husband they are a powerhouse in Hollywood they have a lot of power so Justin Baldoni as this up-and-coming director is gonna get the Henry Cavill treatment for reference Henry Cavill left The Witcher because the direction that the show was going and he felt that he didn't respect the, the video games and didn't respect even the books that Netflix The Witcher is based on and he kept on trying to step the show the series back into the right direction and trying to really respect the essence of the show and since that they wouldn't listen to this man he decided to leave the witcher and very quickly after they kind of there were so many articles and so many rumors starting to pop off out of nowhere out of their ass about how Henry Cavill was a womanizer about how he was so difficult to work with and about how he didn't like to work and take orders from women which nobody have ever said that before he left and very quickly there was this environment where they were trying to make him seem like this horrible guy that was a womanizer and get women to hate him and basically turn Henry Cavill into this horrible person to hide the fact that he just left because they were doing rubbish with the show and when I saw that I immediately peeped the bullshit because you're not gonna just come out with your anonymous sources talking shit about Henry Cavill it was very evident that they were just trying to cancel this man but most people did not see that a lot of women still hate Henry Cavill today because of those rumors about him they still think that he's a womanizer they still think that he hates um taking orders from women and that is why he left the witcher but the real reason why he left the witcher was because of this because he was working with a bunch of people that didn't care about the witcher as a book or as a video game that didn't care about the fans that didn't care about the source material but just wanted to take the name take the fan base take the already pre-established fan base take the already pre-established world and do their own thing and it was like no i'm out and so i think it's very important for us to rally around justin baldoni and kind of protect him in the way that i miss i don't feel like henry cabo got that same amount of protection they're already coming for him and thank god it's not really working but in the future just be known that i just feel like there's a target on justin baldoni's back because he's not following the traditional way of hollywood he's being respectful to the source material he's fighting for something not just for money and that is going to be a big problem and so that's what i wanted to say about all this drama i haven't heard this state anywhere whether on youtube or on tiktok people are not talking enough about how justin baldoni really went into this project with a lot of intentionality awareness and just knowing his shit it, which is a stark contrast to Blake Lively and most directors in Hollywood actually this video is not really an attack against Blake Lively I actually believe that she's just following what people expect of her or what she has already what is what is being done in Hollywood like she's just doing what people usually do in Hollywood except that this time is backfiring on her and I'm sure that there was a brief moment where Blake Lively was really confused like hey why are people are attacking me this is what we do and she's just realizing that what we do is not working anymore 
Anyways, to make a long story long, let's put that Justin Baldoni and see how this entire fiasco will resolve itself. And so that's it, guys. Let me know down below what you think about this old debacle. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Au revoir. <laughs>